Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another special ranking video. Tonight, I will be counting down my picks for the top 10 Dracula actors. So let's get started on this list with number 10. And my number 10 is Denham Elliott from the 1968 television series Mystery and Imagination in the episode titled Dracula. Now, Denham Elliott has always been a great actor, and his portrayal of Dracula in here was very well done. The show did not do him any favors as far as how the character gets treated throughout the story, but overall, Elliot's performance in this was excellent, and that's why he makes my list at number 10. All right, so coming in at number nine, we have John Carradine, who played Dracula in House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, and Billy the Kid versus Dracula. And he's lower on my list, unfortunately, because aside from Billy the Kid vs. Dracula, which was a goofy premise to begin with, other than that one, he really doesn't get a chance to actually shine on screen for very long, because in both House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula, he is killed off like the first 20 to 30 minutes of the movie, which is really stupid. I mean, especially for a film called House of Dracula. Carradine should have been the lead of that film and should have led it, but fortunately he didn't. And that is the reason he makes my number nine and not any higher. All right, so let's move on to number eight. And my number eight is Michael Norrie, who played Dracula in a TV series called Cliffhangers. And I just really like the intensity and the style that he brought to the character, even though it was this uh, cop drama kind of uh, TV series and everything more than it was a horror um, series, I liked the fact that he brought something different to the table, kind of like what Daniel Melliot did on his own TV show appearance as Dracula. But yeah, Michael Norrie was pretty damn good in the role. All right, coming in at number seven, we have Frank Langella from the 1979 adaptation of the stage play, Dracula. Now, this performance is what I would have liked to have seen of the character of Baron Meinster in Brides of Dracula. Um, but they tried to make him mo more monstrous and it didn't work with the character. Whereas Franklin Jella never does go into the monstrous version of the character. He stays this suave, sophisticated, very seductive variation of the character. And, uh, you know, that's got to be respected because he sticks with that all the way through. He never tries to go into a real sinister or, you know, dominant, um, evil acting variation of the character. And uh, there's only one other person on my list other than um, Frank Langella that does that. And I'm about to mention him. Coming in at number six, we have Louis Jordan from the BBC film Count Dracula. Now, as I said, much like Frank Langella, he gives him this seductive charm. He never gets violent or evil acting. He is just seductive and suave with his performance. 
And uh, I actually like that as a different take on the character, as opposed to, you know, just consistently always being more overly dramatic or, you know, sinister in the role. So, yeah, that is why Louis Jordan makes my number six. All right, so coming in at number five, we have Gary Oldman from Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, I like a lot of what Gary Oldman brought to the table for Dracula. Elements that I didn't like was some of those elements where he just goes a little bit, you know, over the top in his portrayal. Mostly when he's the old man version of the character. His, his weird quirks that he adds to the character then are not that good. It just seems hammy to me. Um... So that is the reason Gary Oldman doesn't make it any higher. But whenever he is in his younger mode and seducing um, Mina and Lucy, um, he is damn good. And he's in the, in the wolf mode. He was really great. So, um, yeah. Um, it's the old man stuff that really uh, bring, brings it down because of his odd performance in those scenes. All right, so coming in at number four, we have Jack Palance from Dan Curtis's Dracula. Now, Jack Palance is the perfect mixture of sinister and suave and debonair. He's got a lot of what Louis Jordan and Frank Langella brought to the table in his performance, but he can also be sinister and really violent in moments in the film. And when he does those scenes, they don't seem too over the top. They seem, and he performs them well. Um, so Jack Palance did it excellent job with Dan Curtis's Dracula. And it is one of the better adaptations of the story the same way with Louis Jordan's version with Count Dracula. All right, so coming in at number three, we have Gerard Butler from Dracula 2000. Now, I know a lot of people don't really care for this film as much as some others that will be on this list, but I thought that Gerard Butler did an excellent job, especially when you watch his auditions. If you have the DVD and everything and you watch his audition for the role and you watch his actual scenes that they cut out of the film, I really wish that Dracula 2000 would actually get an extended cut that would put all of these deleted scenes that didn't make it into the final film back in there. Because, yes, if you watch the theatrical cut, yeah, Gerard Butler's performance as Dracula is kind of lacking. But when you watch those deleted scenes and the way he performed in his audition, he is one of the top Dracula's easily just for that. So that's why he makes my list so high. All right, so coming in at number two, we have Bela Lugosi, who was in two different incarnations of the character with the 1931 adaptation of the stage play Dracula and Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I'm not a big fan of the Evan Costello meet Frankenstein performance by him, and they really screwed it up when they showed his reflection, so it really hurts the suspension of belief on him being Dracula in that film. But as far as Dracula in 
the 1931 film. He was excellent. He was perfect as far as his Hungarian accent, the way he acts, the way he is seductive, charming, but very, very creepy. Um, Lugosi was perfect at that kind of thing. And this wasn't only the only vampire he played. He played vampires and other things, but it just wasn't Dracula. So you can't count those, unfortunately. But, yeah. Um, I just think that he should have never done Evan Costello meet Frankenstein because um, it, it really kind of brings this him down as an actor playing Dracula when you compare the two performances. But 31 was pretty damn good. And that's why he makes my number two. Now before I get to my number one, here are a few honorable mentions in no particular order. First, Rutger Hauer in Dracula 3 Legacy. Now, Rutger Hauer has all the abilities to play a damn good Dracula. But at this point in his career, he was older, and then bringing him in to play basically the same Dracula that was supposed to be Gerard Butler's version in Dracula 2000, it didn't work. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm... I like his performance in this, but it just does not fit in with the rest of the series. And um, I just, I don't understand why they went that route with it. So that's why he doesn't make my actual top ten. Then we have Duncan Ryder from The Monster Squad. And... He brings a bit of a slasher mentality to Dracula. He makes him more um, really animalistic, just murdering cops left and right. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of Dracula vibe to his performance, unfortunately. And that's a shame because I really like Duncan Reiner as an actor. He's really good as an actor, but... Yeah, um, Monster Squad kind of let him down in there. And finally, we have Jordy Johnson, who played the character in the TV series Dracula the Series. And I really like his portrayal of the character. It's very subtle, it's very cool. And whenever he has the moments to where he's going to bare his fangs and be sinister, he does well enough in there. The problem is, it was in a kid's TV series, and he wasn't able to really be fully serious in this role. It wasn't really something that you really took fully serious as a film or show and everything. So... Um, having a, him in a kid's show like that, it just, it, it hampered his performance. Like I said, he did a good job as Dracula in here, but no reason that he would make my list because of that, though. All right, so now we come to my number one, and my number one, since you have not seen him yet on this list, is, of course... Christopher Lee, who played the character in numerous films for Hammer Productions and numerous other performances as the character, uh, namely in Jess Franco's um, Count Dracula, not to be confused with the BBC version, which I mentioned earlier with Louis Jordan. Now, Christopher Lee brings something to the Dracula character that I just, and my father as well, um, he, he, this was his favorite Dracula as well, um, he just brings an intensity and an animalistic quality to the character that just makes him 
a total badass. And just the size of Christopher Lee, because he was a very big man, he makes Dracula a very imposing figure as a character. So that is the reason why he makes my list at number one. But what do you guys think? What is your list of the top 10 Dracula actors? Do you agree with some of my picks? Would you put them in a different order? Or would you put other versions of Dracula with different actors on your list? Let me know in those comments down below. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified about future videos just like this one. And while you're by the subscribe button, click that join button and become a Dark Knight fan. As a Dark Knight Fan Plus member, you have access to an area on the channel right now where you can request a movie, TV series, or ranking video of your choosing. And when I do that video, it will go up for all Plus members to watch exclusively on the channel prior to me finding a spot for it on the schedule eventually later down the road for all the general public on YouTube. So if you wanted to get interactive, now is your opportunity. And if you missed last week's ranking video, check out the link above. And if you missed any of our other ranking videos, check out this playlist and get caught up.